Next up, the Citrus Bowl. And, you know, Kentucky 20, Iowa 17. There were a lot of people. Uh, this line just continued to grow and grow and grow. I think it was Kentucky by two early. And then it went to two yeah. and a half, up to three, et cetera. It got up to four at one point. And then it started coming back down because early, early on New Year's Day morning, it was revealed that Kentucky was going to be out or without a ton of guys due to COVID. Right? They had a bunch of guys that tested positive. Even the uh, the Kentucky sports radio guys couldn't make the trip down because they all tested positive beforehand. And so you didn't really know exactly who was going to play for the Wildcats, et cetera. But because most of them were on defense, you really weren't that scared of Iowa because their offense is just putrid. And they bad. were still pretty really bad. They bad. had They had some fun plays. They gained 384 yards on offense and still were only able to score 17 points in this ballgame. Just abnormally ridiculous. Uh, Post game win expectancy, by the way, seventy six percent for Kentucky. Another ten win season for Mark Stoops. I, it, I we can talk about this all kind of fun, stuff. But. This is a fun game at the end when Iowa was up. It was so funny. I forgot who was calling this game, but I remember. I remember Kentucky finally scored, and it was like a minute 43 left or whatever, and it was like a lot of time left on the clock for Iowa, and I just I just laughed my ass off. I was like, dude, there could be 13 minutes left on the clock. I ain't scoring in two and a half. Like, are you insane? I know, I know football. I know that, like, in any game in the world, a minute 43, other teams got all their timeouts. That's, that's a lifetime of clock. Not, not, not for Iowa. Not with Iowa. Not for Iowa. Not, not for Iowa, Iowa baby. <laughs> this is this is a different sport. I know it's still football, but is it really football? It's 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 old man football. Is what it is. It is. It's crazy. When when he said first when Kentucky <laughs> scored, I thought ball game. This thing's over with. I'm going back to the uh, um uh the, Notre, Dame, Notre game. Dame game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so I flipped back over to that. And but before I hit that little little previous button, I heard him say, plenty of time left on the clock, and I stopped, and I looked at the <laughs> clock, and I was like, mm, this guy has not watched. And here's, a, nope. here's what sucks about this, okay? Here's what sucks about ESPN having all these games and nobody else having any of them. All these announcers have never watched a single game. Now, they've watched a lot of football, and they know a lot of football. They've watched zero Iowa football games. For you to say that, you've never watched an Iowa game all year. Yeah, oh, well, because they they work uh, their, you know, their games, their conferences, week. and I was not on ESPN ever. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And if uh, they are, it's because they're in a big, big game, and so it's the big boys that get them. But it's not this crew, and this is the problem. Yeah, these guys. You get one damn bowl game this week. You can't go watch it. You can't watch film. And don't tell me these guys watched film. They didn't. They didn't. <laughs> or else you would have said that. <laughs> Sam Laporta is the tight end for Iowa that caught seven passes for 122 yards. He did have one touchdown, 36. Just another tight end out of Iowa. They have him every year, it feels like. Uh, but this kid, I believe, is going to be back next year. You know, a lot of, lot of fun. Gavin Williams is the running back that had 16 carries for 98 yards. So things do look good for them going forward. No, but, they're going to be the same that they are. I mean, yeah. Here's the thing. Anybody they're losing, they're replacing them with somebody that looks exactly like Because them. they develop their guys. Like, they really do. They develop their guys. They, they, they don't start a lot of underclassmen. Yeah. They don't have a lot of freshmen and sophomores playing a whole lot because they're getting them to look like the upperclassmen that are playing now. Yes. So that when it's their turn, they play exactly like those guys play. Exactly. This is what Kirk Ferentz does, 100%. Uh, on the Kentucky side, Will Levis, 17 out of 28, passing 233 yards, one touchdown. He did have one pick. Uh, Chris Rodriguez did what he usually does, 20 carries, 107 yards, one touchdown. And then Wandale Robinson, 10 receptions for 170 yards and was a, men, or was a man amongst boys. Uh, just... He's, that he surprised is me because Iowa's secondary is really good. They did. Iowa had really some good. guys I, out, so I was. I know they did, but I was surprised. I was still surprised that 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 he was able to to dominate the way he did. Yeah, out there. No, he was awesome. He was awesome. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and 
at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.